Hi everybody, Jacob here. Welcome back to the Fashion Bunker. This is the continuation to the Coromandel Pure Perfume Broken Bottle. <clears throat> I've been to the Chanel Boutique nail polish. We're going to get to this as well. I've been to the Chanel Boutique. I have to say, okay, let me just rewind slowly for quickly for who doesn't know because this is a review, or an unboxing and a review or first impressions of Coromandel. Well, we'll see if it's going to be. Hopefully it's going to be that. But let me rewind to what happened in the last video. In the last video, I tried to unbox and open a brand new bottle of Coromandel Pure Perfume. Uh, there was a flaw in production. The stopper wouldn't budge. It just wouldn't open and it, it broke. You could watch that video. The link to that video is in the description box underneath this video. And you can see how it all went down, how it all happened, how it all unfolded on camera without me knowing what was going to happen. Um, then I mentioned at the end of the last video that I was going to go to the Chanel boutique the next day and would try to uh, talk to them and, and show them what happened, explain what happened. Thankfully, I also had everything on camera and to see if I could replace it with a new bottle. I have to say, the Chanel staff, the Chanel team, the entire way that they dealt with this was impeccable, was incredible, was wonderful. I just arrived to show them the two plastic bags because I put the bottle, it was wrapped in paper and then in a plastic bag, then in another plastic bag because it was leaking. And also because it smelled so intense. So it's the second I showed it to them, I was like, hey, this this broke opening it. They didn't even want to know why, what, where, when, how. They just said, Jacob, no worries. Uh, we're just going to give you a new one. And I explained to them, I was like, okay, well, th wow, thank you so much. But let me just explain to you the situation because... You know, I wouldn't want this to happen again. It's not that this bottle fell out of my hands. This was a production mistake. <laughs> the stopper was almost as if it were glued tight to the actual bottle. So, um, what's going to happen now? I'm going to unbox another bottle of Coromandel. There you have it, guys. The pure perfume of Coromandel. To say that they're sorry for what happened, that was so sweet of them. I got this wonderful little kit of perfumes. Look how gorgeous this is. It's a selection of three. Let me just see exactly concentrations. I think we also have too much light here. Let me tone it down a little. Just to be able to read this, then we're going to light it up again better. But we got number five, Eau de Parfum, 1.5 ml, Gabrielle, Eau de Parfum, 5 ml, and Coco Mademoiselle, Eau de Parfum, 1.5 ml. A selection of these three. Okay. All right. Thank you so much for that. Chanel, very much appreciated. Uh, so, just to prove to you guys that uh, this is what has really happened. This is the, the box I opened yesterday. It's the same batch number. They only had the same batch number. So we got 3901, 3901. So, fingers crossed that this one works out. So, I kept the box. Um, such a sucker for all their packaging. And I also have my little uh, wax stamp from yesterday with the double C logo. So we're going to go through all this again today. While I'm unboxing this, I can tell you what this is. I've had the pleasure of exclusively previewing what will be coming out in November. Um, a limited edition makeup range that's dedicated to some special button, Chanel button. I don't know exactly what button, but um, the eye makeup, the highlighters, everything has basically a pressed in shape of a, of a particular Chanel button. And then they also have a couple of nail polishes. I only remember the color. This one, you can't really see very well, but it has like many sparkles inside of the black. They have like purple, green, red. It's really beautiful in real life. On camera, it doesn't translate. It's called Deepest. And this Bordeaux brownie, ready brownie color, which is amazing. I wish to have... This is the... This is a... 
the color of the leather I want a classic Chanel bag to like lambskin leather in this color that's what I'm looking for I would love to have a Chanel bag in this color this name I forgot so these are going to be limited edition coming out in November I got to test them out let's add the two scarabs from the Chanel Metier Da collection the brooch and the earring just for good luck you know how Coco Chanel herself would surround herself with all sorts of um, trinkets that would bring good luck because she was very superstitious we're playing that number now with this bottle because I'm very superstitious about it I want this to go right okay here we go we're opening it and there you go second try <laughs> First, first time it didn't work out. Let's see. This is the back with the double C. I said also yesterday, it's a lot of people, if they're selling their used bottles. They would kind of close it like this, thinking that this is the front. But no, that's the back. This is the front. Okay. So let's put this to the side. Oh, gosh. Okay. Let's do this delicately. So... Oh my god, what a deja vu, you guys. Um, this thread, so this is hand threaded and the stamp, this wax seal with the double C is pressed with a little metal gidget that they have and it's kind of hand pressed. They seal these bottles by hand with this skin type foil, which used to be animal. It's not anymore, it's uh, synthetic nowadays. And I said that the softest part of the thread is here. In this part it's not there or there so we're gonna go here to cut it there you go and we cut through now I'm gonna see this is how I open each one of my bottles it's not like I did anything wrong yesterday it's oh that's how it's been for centuries hmm? okay all right there you go. Now we're going to try to detach the wax stamp here, the seal, without damaging it. Oh my gosh, I'm so nervous. I hope this is going to work out today. I really do. Fingers crossed. I'm sweating, you guys. Okay. Okay, the stamp is still attached, doesn't matter. Let's just leave the seal attached to the little ribbony, cordy thing here. There it is. Let's try to focus on it so you could see the double C. There you go. A little double C stamp over there. Okay, so this we're going to put aside, add it together to the other one from yesterday. Now, this is still not over. We still have the skin surround, well, the skin, whatever this material is. It's usually cut in the back. In fact, I see this one is as well. So we are going to detach it from the back. ever so slightly, delicately, gently. Let me open this up to make the scissors thinner. Uh, there you go. Okay. So then we just take it and it's been wrapped around. Taking off the seal. Coromandel, I said this yesterday. It's like a snake. It's shedding its skin. It's giving birth to itself. A new life. A new smell. We are experiencing Coromandel in a brand new formulation. So, this is the little skin around the neck of the bottle. Okay. Moment of truth. Zzz, bring us good luck, you little guys. Little Chanel scarabs. Okay, I'm gonna twist. Ah! Perfect. Look at that. 
No problems whatsoever. And oxygen. There you go, guys. That's how easy it should be to open this. I'll just put it down very delicately. Okay. I'm going to put this on the glass, not on this paper, just to make it more sturdy. Okay. Now, you know what a beautiful um, way I have to apply perfume? This is brand new. The Chanel perfume with the stopper. I'm going to apply it in the shape of one to the double C. That's how I apply it. Isn't that cool? <laughs> okay. So... Uh, now, when you just apply a little bit, and I'm going to add some more just for the sake of this, I don't want to say review, but I want to say, because um, there might be double C, but also I'm going to tab whatever is left over. If you apply it, I kind of like to, you know, just take all the fragrance off of the stopper to the sides. There you go. There's usually also some perfume left here. Yeah, in fact, it's all wet. I feel it. Take that off too, and then we seal it again. I mentioned in my video yesterday, so per by the way, this one just works perfectly. Thank you, Chanel. All's well that ends well. I mentioned yesterday, and also, you know, a bit of es esoteric, a bit of uh, being being Chanel in this case, like, you know, we have, we have our trinkets to bring us good luck because you never know. This worked. It really worked. Thank you, Coco. Um, all right. So as I mentioned yesterday, I put the stopper directly on my skin. I love how they feel on the skin. I love Chanel stoppers. I don't need to, you know, play with them in terms of, um, as I mentioned before, some people take... Uh, Q-tips and dip them in here and then on their skin. To me, the Q-tip absorbs too much perfume. I wouldn't do it. I don't mind that a bit of residue of the skin or whatever dust is on your skin, you know, once you touch it with the stopper and you put the stopper into the bottle. Then with time, a bit of residue collects at the bottom of the bottle. But that's fine. That's your own skin. It's okay. Dirt was invented. <laughs> well, dirt was invented. Dirt was always there. But perfumes were kind of also invented to cover up the smell of dirt when people didn't really have the chance to always bathe. Um, anyway, a, the concept of a part of us also being in the bottle, it, 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 it's gross to many if you think about it, but it's also very fascinating because it's kind of life and death also. It, it reminds us that we're mortal. And I know a lot of people are super scared of that, but to me, fragrances are there to remind us of our mortality and the beauty of that mortality because, because everything is limited in time. Everything does come to an end. So you got to treasure those moments that you got as long as you got them because, yes, they might be your last, but also they might be amazing. You can make them even better than they actually are given to you by embellishing them. To me, fragrance embellishes those moments very much. So I'm not going to lay this flat because I don't want it to leak. We're not going to test fate, you guys. So I'm going to put it aside because it's going to be a bit wobbly if I leave it here. Well, we could leave it here for now because it's closed. So if it does fall... I'll pick it up quickly. Um, but we can put this in here so we have the reference. Now, as far as the smell is concerned, I'm going to smell this at the, right now. Okay, so yesterday, as you've seen, I have spilled, like, a lot. One-tenth of the bottle was all over my hands. Um, by the next day when I woke up, the rest of the bottle also completely leaked out and was all over the tissue that was enveloping the bottle. And it smelled just, like... Too much. Too much of pure perfume at once really gave you a completely chemical, intense, intoxify, intoxicating patchouli smell. Dosed as I did now, maybe just a drop or two, this one turns majestic. It is so warm. Oh. For the occasion of a comparison, I have one of the first batches ever released, over 10 years old. Batch 3302, they repeat every 10 years. It's not a new 3302, but a 10 year old one. Eau de Toilette. Very intense. And I have a new batch of the Eau de Parfum, Coromandel, 4ml Splash. Okay. So let's put that. 
here. There it is. So we have all three of them. We have eau de toilette, eau de parfum, and parfum. I can tell you already without having to re-smell. This one I know very well because I have several bottles of this one throughout the years I've used it. The warmth and the creaminess and the lusciousness of the pure perfume. You can maybe lean it. Ah, oh, that's cool. You don't get it in these two. This one is more rough. You get the white chocolate towards the dry down, but it's scratchy. It, it's more wet. It's a wet, fresh type of patchouli. The Eau de Parfum, I have the feeling, plays with a sort of a concept of jasmine mixed with benzoin in a different way, making it warmer. But at the same time, that warmth becomes, to me, more synthetic, artificial. So I'm not a fan of the Eau de Parfum. The pure perfume, as it smells now, is from the get-go luscious, warm, deep, just amazing. You, you just want to bury your nose into it. it. There's nothing screechy about it. There's nothing, there's nothing scratchy about it. It doesn't bother you at all. This one needs a little bit. Let me spray it just to have it. I'm going to spray it off camera because I don't want it even near my uh, costume jewelry. So I have to spray it away from the camera. Give me a second. Okay. So here it is. Okay, so the eau de toilette is. Um... Oh wow, it's also very rich. But this one is one of those first, the first bottles produced. So it's way more intense than the eau de toilettes that were reformulated and produced in the later years, in particular from 2012 onwards. This one is still the original formulation of Coromandel, and it's a bomb. It hits you like no other. And there's a freshness to it that uh, only in eau de toilette... It, you know, I know perfumes are genderless, but I always say it myself. But if we were to kind of understand how the eau de toilette works, um, it almost has that sort of peppery opening scratchy tone that Anteos has. Anteos has the same character in the opening. And that's what the, Eau de Toilette, the original Eau de Toilette has as well. It's kind of like it, it scratches you. It's a coolness that scratches you, but it already announces what is coming up later, which will be all that patchouli, all that white chocolate. Um, the Pure Perfume doesn't have any of that. It's immediately warm. It's like a warm cup of cocoa, but it's exotic. It's from a faraway land that you've never tasted this cocoa before. Not cocoa, the perfume. Cocoa to drink, warm cocoa. That's how delicious it is. The Eau de Parfum, we could put a droplet on as well while we're at it. And I'm also going to, now this I can do on camera, I'm going to put it far away from the pure perfume. Okay. Okay, I have it up here. Let me smell it. And this is the problem with most of these Eau de Parfum reformulations of the Les Exclusives. This one also suffers that in my personal, humble, modest opinion. Um, it smells more synthetic than the Eau de Toilette used to smell before they were reformulated as well and I don't like that and I don't I don't like to have to pay more because this one costs way more than this one the same size I don't want to have to pay more for something that is lesser quality and that makes you wait longer in order for it to actually be pleasant as because you know when the Odo Parfums came out, I already had the memory, I already have my context in which I, I know how the Odo Toilette smells or smelled like, so you can't fool me anymore. 
had I never smelled the eau de toilette, and the first perfume I ever smell is the is the eau de parfum concentration of Coromandel, then I would maybe love it. But knowing what it used to be, and knowing how they kind of messed with the prices, I, you just can't love it. Now, I think, all things considered, Chanel has done good by us, because with the launch of the Pure Perfume, this is a different territory. It is so lusciously warm and doesn't smell, I mean, you know, every perfume is synthetic nowadays. You can forget the 100% natural stuff, because if you say 100% natural, just, just cut the grass in a field and get na naked and roll in it and smell like grass, or just rub lemons on your skin or peppermint or lavender leaves on your skin and that's not, not nature. The rest is not nature. And that synthetic element to fragrances is what some of us can get used to, some never get used to. I'm personally fine with it. I'm living with fragrances all day, constantly, all the time. So my nose has become quite, I don't want to say desensitized, actually it's more sensitive, but my nose has the ability, like a wine sommelier, you know, I can identify really quickly if somebody's using a synthetic ingredient that has a certain quality to it and I can immediately smell out a cheap synthetic component. Now, the pure perfume of Coromandel is just so soft and luscious and really, really, it just makes you fall in, you know. This is, for those of you who have perhaps watched and if you haven't, please do watch it. Uh, Netflix's um, Jim Henson's The Dark Crystal, The Age of uh, Resistance. Now, I'm a big fan of The Dark Crystal from the 80s, when Jim Henson was still alive. And uh, the new version of the movie, of the TV show, but it's just so well done that I call it movie, is just so beautifully done and the puppeteering is incredible and they really worked so hard to use the least amount of CGI possible and if we consider CGI to be translated in perfumery as synthetic components, some synthetic components are better than others, some CGI in some movies or TV shows is better than CGI components in other movies, same here. The Dark Crystal Age of Resistance has good synthetic components and the natural components that are in there, which is the puppets that are moved live on screen for the camera, that would be the, the, the natural smelling ingredients, right? And that's what Coromandel, the pure perfume, is. And I think it really matches the whole mood and vibe of, of Thra, the world of Thra and the Dark Crystal. It just... It, it's, it's the perfume for the Dark Crystal. It's the Dark Crystal perfume. What can I tell you? Chanel... You should join teams with um, with Jim Henson and with Netflix and really collaborate because Coromandel, I, I envision it used by the All Madra. I love how they call her the All Madra. How they translate it like mother into Madra that comes from Madre, which is Italian. It's amazing. Anyway, the show is great. You should look at it. And the smell, it, it is from another world. It definitely catapults you into a dreamy like state where fairies exist, elves exist, and there's the evil Skeksis and they look like monstrous vultures, but then there's also beautiful creatures that have a good heart and everything is soft and brown. There's a lot of purple hues, there's a lot of ambery hues, there's a lot of honey hues, there's a lot of green hues, there's a lot of soil, a lot of wet lands, but there's also a lot of grass and different types of flowers, and then there's highlands, there's mountains, there's ice, there's snow, there's rivers, there's water, there's sands, there's crystals in the dunes of the sands. That's all here. That's exactly how Coromandel just delivers everything. It's that beautiful. And it's so beautiful that, I don't know if you ever had this, it happens to me sometimes in this case, it definitely is also going to happen. I, I know myself so well by now. Um, this is not a perfume I will use a lot. And not because it's not good, but because it is that good. I really want to treasure it. I really want to kind of use it for special occasions because 
it's so powerful that it triggers so many emotions that it's it's just beautiful to to taste them from time to time to taste them when when you really think it's worth it now that culture that whole concept of not giving in to over consuming something is very anti consumer society today today it's all about use it as quick as you can buy it again keep using it consume it consume it consume it consumer society well it doesn't have to be that way and i think coromandel delivers a wonderful example of pace pacing yourself and holding back um, but in a very elegant way. You know, Coco says when you leave the house, look at yourself in the mirror rather than adding another accessory. Take one off and then leave the house. That's what this one is. It's so opulent and strong in itself. It's already like having 50,000 accessories on your body when you're exiting the house. So use it wisely. Use it when you are ready. Use it when you know that the moment is important. It needn't be a successful moment. It needn't only be an incredibly happy and important moment, but it needs to be meaningful. I think, I think we can, you know, life throws, <laughs> throws a lot at us and we oftentimes don't know what's going to happen next. And there are surprises in life, but there are meaningful moments and the meaningful moments are usually those moments we see them coming or we plan them out or we even, this is one of those little things within destiny that we get to control the meaningful things, because we make the meaningful. Um, good or bad situations happen. I mean, you can also create if you're lucky and you manage to pull it off, a good situation, positive situation, but meaningful is something that you actually have the power to create. And Coromandel is a wonderful frame to that meaningfulness. So there you have it, guys. This would be my first impressions. Uh, also review, unboxing, Totally did it in a pure Coco Chanel or Gabrielle Chanel style uh, because she was very superstitious. So was I today. So I had my good luck trinkets. The superstition failed. The trinkets prevailed. These will forever be with their secrets, with all their codes in the back. These will forever be our good luck charms from now on. You see, I've made this moment meaningful. This is a perfect example. I have actively decided to place them in that position, to, to use them in this video, to help boost the good luck for the bottle opening. And fate wanted it to not be damaged. The bottle worked well. But now, because I created this moment, this has become meaningful to me. So that is a meaningful moment. And it's really cool for me to have worn Coromandel because I tested it out today on my skin in the moment when I created a meaningful situation. So that's a perfect example. A bit strange, but you, you get the gist. Quickly before we end, let's just get into the notes. Top notes of Coromandel, pure perfume, are citruses, neroli, and bitter orange. Then we got the middle notes, rose, jasmine, the orris root, the powerful patchouli. In the base notes, we got olibanum, labdanum, and the famous benzoin, which is what, which is something that you smell out practically immediately in the other two concentrations. Here it's not immediately present because all of the warmth of all the other notes is there. It will stay close to the skin. It's not a projection beast. And I do suspect that it's not going to have this huge longevity either. But to know that, I will have to test it out a bit more. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you like this unboxing slash reveal slash follow up to the video before this video slash first impressions slash review of Coromandel, the pure perfume. If you haven't already but wish to, please consider subscribing to my channel here on YouTube. I'm also on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. And I'm also on Patreon, Super Deco Ball Spell Together. I would love to thank all my patrons for helping me support the channel. Thank you so much for pledging. Um, a lot of videos 
are available only on Patreon. Others hit Patreon before they hit YouTube and all the videos there are ad free. Plus there are exclusive photos and more information. Also, be sure to ask me questions right to the email address askdacob at gmail.com if you wish to be featured in the next Ask Dacob TV show. And hopefully the next Ask Dacob episode will be out as well. Thank you guys so much for watching. Never give up on love. Bye.